Welcome to Mr. News Art Class. It's wonderful to see your smiling faces. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Mr. Newquist, but folks call me Mr. New because it's easier to say and it's easier to remember. But even though people call me Mr. New, I'm not a new teacher anymore. I've been teaching for about 12 years now. Anyway, it's wonderful to see your smiling faces and I really look forward to being your art teacher. Let's get started. This video is the first in a series where we're using the most basic art skills. So regardless of your ability level, you should be able to follow along with these lessons and create something amazing with me. In this series, we'll talk about using basic shapes, we'll talk about patterns, then we'll move on to some slightly more complicated shapes and designs, and we'll have a little bit of cartoony looking fun. And then for the last half of this series, we'll talk about famous artists like Georgia O'Keeffe, Pablo Picasso, and Vincent Van Gogh. This lesson is gonna focus on the simplest elements of art. We're gonna practice making lines and shapes. So go ahead and grab some drawing supplies and follow along with me. For starters, we want to write our name. Now you could use a pencil or a crayon or whatever you have, but we wanna start by writing our name. I'm gonna write my name up at the top. My name is Mr. New. Mr. New. Now, if you look closely and carefully at your writing, you'll see that those letters are made out of lines and shapes, aren't they? <gasps> Guess what? Lines and shapes are what we're practicing today. So, after you've written your name, Let's go ahead and underline your name. Make a line that goes across underneath your name. Now, we can name that line a couple of different ways. That line is a straight line, right? That line is also horizontal. What does horizontal mean? It means sideways. Anything that goes side side is called horizontal. Are there other directions that that line could go? What would we call it if it goes up and down? Make a line that goes up down and we'll call that one vertical. It's still straight just like the first line, but it's not horizontal, it's vertical. So horizontal means sideways and vertical means up down. Well, what do you call a line that goes in between? Make a line that goes in between. It's not vertical, it's not horizontal, it's in between. That's what we call diagonal, diagonal. So right away, there's three big words that we need to remember. Horizontal, vertical, and diagonal. Diagonals can go two different ways, like the letter X. So I've made a diagonal that goes this way. Why don't I also make a diagonal that goes the other way? So we have practiced together making some straight lines that go horizontal, vertical, and two different types of diagonal. But do lines have to be straight? Or could there be other kinds of lines? For example, could I make a line that goes up and then down and then up and then down and then up and then down and then up and then down. Does this line have a name? We call this a zigzag line or some people call it jagged because it has sharp jagged points. How do we make those sharp jagged points? If I make my line super quick, you see how those aren't sharp jagged points? They're sort of round. This is a wavy line. Let's see the difference. Let's do that one more time. For a zigzag line, we go up and stop, then down and stop, then up and stop, then down and stop. And every time you stop, you make a sharp pointy corner. Stop at a corner, stop at a corner. For a wavy line, we don't stop, we keep going. 
we're still going up and down and up and down as we move our pen, uh, crayon or pencil or whatever we're using. But notice that that line is wavy because we didn't stop at the top, we kept going. And we didn't stop at the bottom, we kept going. So if you stop, it makes sharp corners, and if you keep going, it makes wiggly waves. What happens if I move in circles as I go? Well, we call that a swirly or squiggly line. You see how it makes a bunch of loops? Try that. So we have practiced a whole bunch of different kinds of lines here. Horizontal lines, vertical lines, diagonal lines, zigzag lines, wavy lines, swirly lines. Well, this next line that we're going to practice together is a little bit tougher. So let's take it a little bit more slowly. We kind of went through these really fast. Let's take this next one a little slowly because it's kind of difficult. What we're going to do is we're going to make a circle except stop. Notice that I didn't close it off. I left a gap. I want to keep that line going, but instead of closing the circle, I want to go inside. So watch how I do this. You see how it doesn't close together here? It keeps going inside. And I'll just keep going around and around without ever touching my, my line, and then stop when I get to the middle. That's called a spiral. Notice that this spiral almost reminds us of a circle, right? It doesn't quite close off at the end, but it's pretty much a circle, isn't it? Which leads us into a discussion of shapes. We've talked about different ways of making lines. Let's talk about some different ways to make shapes. What do you call a shape that has one, two, three sides. That shape is called a triangle. What do you call a shape that has one, two, three, four sides? That shape is called a square. And what do you call a shape that has just one side? Well, one side that curves around like that is called a circle. Let's do some stretching and shifting and changing of those same shapes. What do we, what, what does it look like if I take my triangle and I stretch it really tall? If I stretch it really tall. That's still a triangle, isn't it? What if I take my square and I stretch it really tall? That's not a square anymore, is it? So a stretched out triangle is still a triangle, it's just a different shape of a triangle. But a stretched out square becomes a rectangle. And what if I stretch out my circle? It turns into an oval, an oval. So we've had some fun practicing different kinds of lines. We've had some fun practicing some different shapes and seeing what happens if we stretch those shapes out. What if we put shapes together? Can we put shapes together to build other shapes? What if I start with a triangle and then I add another triangle to it? What does this shape look like? If I put those two triangles together so that they turn into just one shape now instead of two different shapes, what does that shape look like? It's a diamond or it's called sometimes a rhombus, a rhombus. So that was two triangles put together to make a rhombus. What if I put three triangles together? One, two, three triangles put together. Again, I'm going to turn those into just one shape so that we're not seeing the triangles anymore. And we'll 
That shape has a name too. It kind of looks like a rectangle, except the sides are leaning in. Do the sides of a rectangle lean in? No, this shape has a different name. It's called a trapezoid. Fun fact, trapezoids used to be Mr. New's favorite shape because it has the letter Z in the word trapezoid, and I really like the letter Z. Well, let's try making a rhombus or a trapezoid, but not by putting triangles together to do it. Let's just draw a rhombus. How would we do that? We would start with two diagonal lines, and then we would put in two horizontal lines. And how would we draw a trapezoid? Well, we would draw start with two horizontal lines that are different sizes. Notice one is short and one is long. And then we just connect the dots with diagonal lines. Notice that those diagonal lines go opposite directions. They don't go the same direction like these two did. They go opposite directions. Well, we have had a bunch of fun playing around with lots of different lines and shapes. Now it's time to see what we can build with these lines and shapes. So let's either flip your paper over to the back or flip to a new sheet. And let's start talking about how we can build pictures by putting shapes together. This is a cool little book called Harold and the Purple Crayon. We're not going to read the whole book, but we are going to look at some of the pictures in the book. It's by Crockett Johnson. Lovely book here. And um, notice here, looks like he's got a hot air balloon, and he's making a house with windows and drawing grass. And, oh look, lots of buildings, like there's a whole city, right? And he's drawing his whole world. Oh, I love this frightening dragon. <laughs> That's great. Um, but how do, we, how do we put shapes together to make all those things? Well, let's start with something simple like a tree. Well, what shape is the trunk of the tree? It's kind of like a rectangle, isn't it? Now. For the sake of being like Harold here, I'm going to use a purple crayon. You don't have to. You could use a regular pencil. You could use a red if you like red. My favorite color is yellow. You can use whatever. It's totally fine. But I'm going to be like Harold here and use a purple crayon. Now, it's kind of like a rectangle, isn't it? So if I want to build a tree, Oh, this is like a blue violet. It's kind of a dark purple. Oh well. I'll kind of like make a rectangle for the trunk of the tree. And then what shape is uh, the top of the tree? Well, notice that it's, it's, not, it's made out of these bumps. It's kind of like when we made that wavy line. It's like a bumpy, wavy line. And then what shape are these apples in the tree? Well, they're just circles. Circles. Lots of little tiny circles. And so you see how we built this tree just simply using some of those lines and shapes that we practiced before. We used bumpy lines, we used rectangles, we used circles and we turned it into a tree. Now, what else did Harold build? Let's make the sailboat. Let's start at the bottom with the water. What kind of line did he use for the water? Well, it's kind of like it's kind of like a mix between a bumpy line uh, the wavy line and the, um, the jagged line, because you see how it's curved on the bottom, but it's pointy on the top? So if we want it to be pointy on the top, we need to stop at the top, but we don't want to stop at the bottom, right? So we're going down and then up and stopping. 
we don't stop at the bottom, we stop at the top. Down and up and stop. 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 Right? Well, what shape is the boat? It's kind of like the trapezoid, but flipped upside down where the lines lean the opposite direction. The sides lean the opposite direction. So, I'll make the sides lean out as they go up. And then, go across the top. And there, it's um, sort of a trapezoid boat. But it needs a sail. What shape is the sail? Well, it's like another trapezoid, isn't it? But it's got this long line on one side. Let's start with that. Let's make that long line that goes up. And then we'll make the other, another trapezoid just coming off of that line. So that line is going to be part of our trapezoid. So we're going to come across, and we're going to come across with a shorter line. So we got one long line and one short line, and then diagonal line down. See how easy it is to use these simple lines and shapes to build a cool picture? We could draw Harold in that boat, or yourself in that boat, if you want. You could draw a little face there. I'm just going to leave it as just a boat. The last thing we'll all do together is, ooh, we'll make a city. Well, how did Harold make a city? It's lots and lots of buildings, isn't it? What shape is each building? That's right, they're rectangles. So, I'll make a tall rectangle, and then I'll make another rectangle. But notice, notice how like this building goes behind these other two that are in front of it. That's called overlapping. Overlapping. How do we draw that? Well, I'm going to start at the top of one of the buildings. I'm going to be making a rectangle that goes up and over and then down and stop at the top of the next building. Then I'm going to pretend to draw through this building, but I'm not actually going to draw it. And then when I get to the bottom, I'm going to go over and across between the two buildings and then pretend to draw my way back up. Did I actually draw this part that's behind this building? No, because you can't see it. Okay, now these buildings all need windows too, so we can make a bunch of squares. Squares or rectangles for those windows. It's kind of like a pattern, just making the same thing over and over and over. Speaking of which, we're going to be talking about patterns in some more of our drawing lessons in this series. Maybe for this building in the back, we want taller windows. Big, tall windows, maybe. They could be rectangles instead of squares, right? They don't have to be squares. Because every building is going to be a little bit different, right? Right? If we look at a city, all the buildings are a little bit different, right? Anyway, we have practiced here making a whole bunch of fun little things using those shapes and lines that we practiced at the beginning. We did these objects together, the tree, the boat, and the city. But I want to see what you guys can come up with. So now it's your turn. You use your imagination to come up with whatever other things you want to add to this picture. You can make another picture on another paper if you want. You can add just a round to the bottom or above. And, and these pictures don't all have to go together. You can make more than one picture on the same page like I did. It's totally fine. There's no rules. I just want to see what your imaginations come up with. So this lesson was just a warm-up to get your brain flowing with ideas about how you can use those simple lines and shapes to build interesting pictures. The next couple of lessons will focus on specific ways that you can put these lines and shapes together with patterns and interesting things like that to create some fun, exciting artwork. 
starting with castles in the next lesson. I can't wait to see you then.